There's an old saying that you've not seen Norfolk till you've seen a wherry. Well, that may have been so a long time ago, before the days of rail and tarmacadam, when water transport was the quickest and cheapest way to move heavy goods. Made of oak and clinker built, the Norfolk wherries would slice through the water given wind. If not, it was quanting. Heavy work with a cargo of timber, bricks, iron, coal, sand or agricultural products like Norfolk reed or marl. When they were fully loaded, a robin could drink off the deck. A refinement of the trading wherry was the pleasure wherry. First built in the 1860s, they were used by shooting parties or people just interested in sailing. Fully crewed, of course. They can still be seen today, tied up in boatyards or at anchor in the middle of a broad, living up to their name, providing accommodation for holidaymakers. But for the majority of wherries, a sad end. Sunk out of hand, broken up for kindling, or providing silt barriers to strengthen river banks. Esila, Rambler, Zulu, Endora, Jesse, and Maid of the Mist, never to be seen again. But one trading wherry survives, Albion, thanks to the continued interest of people forming the Norfolk Wherry Trust. Built in 1898 by William Brighton at Oulton Broad, Albion sailed the broads up until 1940, when she was demasted and became a dumb lighter, ferrying sugar beet to Cantley Factory. Following the war, the inevitable decline in river traffic made it impossible for Albion to make a living from carrying cargo. But thanks to a successful rescue appeal by the Norfolk Wherry Trust, she continues under sail in her 75th year covering running costs by subscriptions and charter. But this voyage is different. It's the first leg of a journey all the way to Ely in Cambridgeshire, to be the showpiece of the National Inland Waterways Rally. Her skipper is Ewan Anderson. In 1949, the Norfolk Wherry Trust was formed. The Albion was given to us by Reckon and Coleman and she was slipped into Fellows Dock in Great Yarmouth, where she was um, renovated, cleaned up, a mast was, a new mast was set, new sails were made, and her maiden voyage took place from Yarmouth to Norwich, if my memory serves right, carrying timber in 1950. This particular trip is to take her down to Lowestoft for a refit prior to going to sea in July when we're heading out of Yarmouth up to King's Lynn by sea and then up the Fens to Ely for inland uh, waterway rally. Now this will be the first time the old lady's been to sea since 51 when she went from Yarmouth to Lowestoft. She'll, she'll never have done a voyage like this before. But uh, we feel that she's more than capable of it is uh, quite unique in effect, sailing a craft of this size in very restricted waters. Uh, one uh, derives a tremendous amount of pleasure and satisfaction from starting off from a point and reaching the point that one intends to get. However, this is not uh, always possible within the prevailing weather conditions. Uh, one can set off uh, taking the full advantage of a tide for a point. Well, that tide will last for six hours. So one makes as far as one can on that tide. Uh, winds can uh, die on us, in which case it is a question of quanting, if the tide is still with us. Uh, if the tide isn't uh, still with us, then it's a question of making the nearest pub, mooring up, having a pint or two, having a meal, maybe having a sleep if we've been sailing all night, uh, and then carrying on when conditions are favorable towards carrying on.
prior to this trip, um, it was obvious that we had to overhaul her to a considerable extent or make sure that she was in a fit um, and seam-like condition. Uh, and towards this end, um, we slipped her at uh, George Overy's yard in Lowestoft, which in effect is the only yard available in the Broads country uh, for slipping this size of vessel. As will no doubt be appreciated, the problems of uh, maintaining an old lady of this age are quite considerable. Unless uh, there are any accidents, which uh, I'm glad to say are relatively rare, she comes out of the water every two years and uh, has her uh, bottom scraped and uh, retarred and any work that's necessary be to be done on the bottom is done at that time. This, uh, in this modern day and age, is a very expensive process. It's always interesting to see the old girl out of the water because you sail her around and you trust that um, everything's all right down below. But when she does come out of the water, well, you see something that you don't see apart from every two years when she does come out. There was a little bit of accident damage to repair where uh, inevitably in the course of uh, a season or two seasons, she gets thumped, sometimes by other cruisers, um, sometimes putting her alongside a key. I'm glad to say this happens very seldom. God, blimey. The letterbox in there, look. Friday the 13th. Paul Key, Yarmouth. All our preparations are about to be put to the test, and the Mayor of Yarmouth was there to see us off. Short one. We've cast off uh, from our mooring on Hall Key and we are towing alongside the Deep Venture, uh, which is our escort ship for this trip. Even in the old days of sail, sailing ships mostly were towed out of Yarmouth Harbour because it is an extremely difficult harbour to sail into or out of. In fact, in the days of um, sailing fishing vessels, so they were virtually in all cases towed out to sea by a number of um, paddle tugboats. For the purposes of control, we towed alongside, and as we neared the harbour mouth, which is approximately a half a mile from where we were moored, we began to experience the roll that we anticipated crossing the bar. There was considerable amount of roll because there had been uh, a force uh, three wind blowing and this did kick up by the sea, but we had sailed at the right time, it was low water, so we'd got the conditions as best as they could possibly be. We had fitted shrouds to the mast in anticipation of this problem because obviously with three tons of mast, which is normally sailing on a ship on calm water, uh, we were worried on this aspect because there are no shrouds whatsoever apart from a force tail to support this mast. So we had fitted extra shrouds on the side, on the port and starboard sides, in order to um, support it over this particular part of the trip and also later sailing at sea. The crossing of the bar uh, went off without a hitch. We did take some water on board, but it was primarily because water was sluicing down between the Albion and the towboat. And then having uh, reached calmer waters out in, in Yarmouth Roads, we took the tow from the side of the ship and transferred it so that the Arvin was towing astern of the um, deep veteran. Having got into this position, she settled down very happily uh, on the tow, and we found uh, that her breast position was just slightly tucked to one side of the towing vessel, and on this point, she, um, she towed along quite happily with an occasional touch of the tiller just to keep her in the position where we wanted her. Having now taken the Arbion to sea, uh, I can't help uh, thinking with even more respect of the old wherryman 
They were also basically um, extremely good uh, seamen in as much as they could uh, navigate in and out of Yarmouth Harbour on this part of their work. The old lady's settled down nicely now and she's doing very well. Nice quartering wind, taking the tow beautifully. In fact, as you can see, she needs very little steering. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow, we'll be off uh, Hunt Stanton, north of Hunt Stanton, uh, on the Lynn uh, light vessel. We'll cast the tow off and have, sail the old lady around and let her do her own thing. Well, the Albion is now anchored uh, in the wash alongside our towing vessel after a very interesting night. Uh, it was a good tow. Uh, throughout the night, we did experience a bit of rough weather and uh, quite a heavy swell. And at one stage, we thought it wasn't going to be possible to have uh, a free sail round the wash for the rest of the trip. But very luckily, as uh, dawn has broken, the weather is finding a way and uh, it is going to be possible for her to sail under these conditions. Uh, we are keeping her reefed because obviously uh, she is the only wherry left and it behoves us to treat her as gently as possible. Okay, lads, come on up. This is when she likes it. I think that's the number one boy on the port bow, not the port one. Uh, yeah. I'll point her up a little bit. But, uh, there's no need to make a big number of short tacks. There's plenty of water over here. What is an interesting part of uh, the trip here is that in the normal circumstances, at all times, we have river banks within uh, a few yards of the wherry. But now all we can see is ex wide expanses of sea and we can stay on one tack for a considerable length of time. So from the point of view of the actual work involved in sailing the old lady, it's considerably less out here than it is um, going from Horning to Acle. Well, that really was a splendid sail. Uh, really a tremendous experience for the old lady to completely be free of land and to pick up her skirts and really go, and she certainly has. 
the Linwell light vessel showed up and uh, we thought amongst us on the, on the wherry it would be a good idea to go in view of the very calm conditions if we went alongside her and um, distributed some wherry trust leaflets uh, thereby showing the flag uh, and even possibly getting some new members for the trust. As we neared the Linwell light vessel, uh, we lowered the sail uh, and came alongside the vessel and uh, paid our respects to the crew. And uh, however, the time had arrived now to uh, take the tow up again from the deep venture uh, and uh, to head towards King's Lynn to pick up the pilot to take us into that port where the Albion would be moored for the next fortnight to take part in the King's Lynn festival. We threw the vessel open to visitors, and uh, as this was the first time a wherry had ever been in King's Lynn, a considerable number of visitors did come aboard, uh, including some very young ones. Have you ever seen a boat like this? Have you ever seen one like that? No, never been on one before. Me. Look at this. Where do we get that picture again? There she is. That's the Albion. That's the Albion, isn't it? And uh, she's used mostly for um, parties of school children for a week's holiday and things. At the moment, we're staying here for a week, and then um, we go up to Ely. Well, after a successful fortnight's visit to King's Lynn, it was time to get underway uh, to the rally at Ely. And uh, due to the fierceness of the tide, we had to leave at the beginning of the flood and uh, tow up to Denver Sluice, which is the end of the salt water stretch of the Ouse. Also with us um, at this particular part of the trip was my family and a number of friends who were making their holiday out of uh, the visit to Ely. And uh, with all these people on board, of course, we were not short-handed at all as far as any work was concerned. And um, there was no problem getting frequent cups of tea passed around as necessary. And after a very fast trip from King's Lynn, consequent on the strong flood tide, uh, we reached Denver. Approximately 50 yards from the lock, uh, we came alongside the river bank, and with the towboat holding us on the tow line, we got a line ashore to the many uh, willing volunteers who had appeared from the local yacht club. And uh, with their help, we were pulled along the bank towards the lock. Prior to the trip, I had done a, a reconnaissance of the lock and uh, found that it was uh, six inches wider than the width of the wherry. But as we approached, it certainly looked a very tight squeeze. We um, moored in there. Uh, had to remove some wires across the uh, top of the lock, which of course uh, not anticipating the size of the wherry was still there. Uh, we settled in the lock while the um, levels were corrected. The lock gates opened and uh, the Albion came through without any problems whatsoever. Uh, and uh, we were now ready for the next phase of the trip, which was actually visiting the Inland Water Rally at Ely. Now, what uh, better setting than in the shadow of Ely Cathedral? This rally at Ely uh, is attracting, or has attracted more than uh, 400 craft of all shapes and sizes. The only common denominator is that they, that they all float. 
Most of the people at the rally have made this their annual holiday. And uh, in the cases of those ones who are, can get here within a week or so from their different um, homes, uh, they made a non-stop trip of it. Many of the others have come, who have come from considerable distances uh, have moved their boats over weekends, left their boats as far as they've got that weekend, then gone down the following weekend and moved them on a bit further. Given the weather, what could be nicer than all these families comparing views with other boat owners, visiting each other's boats, gathering ideas, and having a beautifully restful, peaceful holiday in Ely. And this part of the trip gave us all aboard a tremendous thrill. This was the uh, culmination of a year's preparations and efforts. And uh, the weather conditions were absolutely perfect. And for most of the last three or 400 yards, uh, with a gentle push in the quant, she made her way. Last 200 yards, a gentle puff of wind came across from just the right direction. Uh, the sail filled, and the old lady, positively curtsying to the crowds, uh, made her way alongside the quay, and we moored up at the cutter at Ely to be met by the chairman of Ely Council, Mr. Cornwall. Good well, welcome, Mr. Anderson, to Thank the city of Ely. Thank you very much, Nick. To an hour celebration year. Yeah. We look forward to having you here. And I hope you have a most enjoyable rally. Uh, thank you for your hospitality already, if I may say. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a, a message from the Mayor of Yarmouth. Thank you very to much. To you. And a present for one of your local hospitals. That's very, very kind of you. Um, any problems on the journey at None all? whatsoever, really, no. She, yeah. she went very well, very well indeed. Yeah. We had a little bit of concern about her mast at sea. Yes. So on the trip back, we'll have her mast out. You will. But uh, she didn't ship one green one. The only thing that's in board is rain, really. We yeah. didn't have much of that.